Yeah, thank you for your time. Uh, I know we have a limited uh, uh, window with you, so I wanted to see if uh, we could kick it off, if you could talk for a minute or two about your background, uh, where you grew up, your education, and your uh, Navy experience. Talk a little bit about, about that for a minute or two. Um, yeah, I so I bounced around a little bit as a kid. We moved quite a lot um, through elementary school, but I went through most of middle school and high school in Richland, Washington, which is a town in southeastern Washington state. Um, I'm the middle of three girls, so I have two fantastic sisters um, who are always my best friends and pushing me <laughs> along the way, whether that was in the classroom or in sports. Um, and I went to the Naval Academy for college. I was really interested in joining the military. Um, for me, that started at a pretty young age, about 12 years old is when I first started being interested in maybe joining the military. Um, and then when I was 14, 9-11 happened. And for me, that really cemented my desire to serve. And that came into focus that the best fit for me was to join the Navy and go to the Naval Academy. I knew I wanted to study engineering. I was hoping I'd be able to run cross country and track. Um, and I knew especially that I wanted to surround myself with people who would really challenge me to develop my, my character, develop as a leader, and prepare to step into some pretty big leadership roles as a young leader after graduation. Um, and so during my time at the Naval Academy, I decided that I wanted to join the submarine force. Um, and I was lucky enough to get the opportunity to do that. During my senior year, they changed the policy and allowed women to enter the submarine force for the first time. And so I was in the right place at the right time to do the right thing for me um, and was able to join the submarine force and serve there uh, before applying to be an astronaut and ending up where I am today. How do you think uh, your experience as a submarine officer prepared you for the challenges of spaceflight? Uh, I think there is no better preparation for spaceflight than serving aboard a submarine. Um, and it was actually the parallels between serving aboard a submarine and working in space that inspired me to want to apply in the first place. I, di I didn't grow up imagining myself able to become an astronaut. It was something I was aware of, but not something I ever really conceived of as a possibility for me until I served aboard a submarine um, and saw what it took to live in a really challenging environment and accomplish a mission. Um, and especially the kind of teamwork it took and how to be a member of a high functioning team, how to challenge myself to show up um, and bring the best version of myself to whatever challenge my team was faced with. Um, and so those experiences, because it's such a similar operational context, I rely on those lessons every single day in my training. And I think I'll rely on them even more aboard the space station. Uh, are you trained to do any spacewalks on your increment right now? Yeah, you know, we're all fully spacewalk qualified on our crew, which is really awesome capability that we have. Um, and we're expecting three spacewalks during our six month stay. One will be pretty soon after we get there in November, and then the other two will be in the spring. Um, and they haven't finalized the crew assignments for those yet, um, but we're all really looking forward to being a part of them, whether the one to, to go out the door or the one to suit up each other or support with robotics operations. So we're really excited about um, those upcoming spacewalks for sure. Can you uh, speak a little bit about your schedule over the next few weeks? Uh, are you pretty much finished with training or do you still have more sims and more training to go through? Um, we are training complete in the sense that we're fully qualified to launch, but we will be doing some training just to keep our skills up as we prepare for the big day. Um, so we have some, we have a trip to Florida this weekend on Saturday. We'll be at the Cape um, actually in our flight capsule, in our flight suits, doing the final testing of the capsule and the final certification for flight. Um, then we kind of go into a quarantine period where we're pretty secluded, trying to make sure that we're healthy on launch day. But during that time, we'll have an opportunity to do some sims with SpaceX uh, to prepare for launch and docking. Um, and then we'll have some other final training events. But, you know, it's just kind of wrapping things up and doing what we need to do do to feel ready on game day, but, but we're feeling pretty ready as a crew and uh, ready to climb into that ca capsule for launch day. I, I heard you've never seen a launch before. Is that true? That is true. It's, it's kind of a great failure of mine that I haven't found myself at the Cape or in Russia for a launch yet. Um, tried a couple times during our training flow, but we just were so busy with our schedule that it was hard to take a few days to go to Florida. 
Um, so yeah, my very first rocket launch will be <laughs> riding that same rocket to space. So I'm really excited to have that experience. Very cool. Um, wanted to ask about the future of uh, NASA's human space flight program for just a minute before we wrap up. Do you, uh, I know you're part of the Artemis cadre of astronauts, so I, you hope to fly to the moon one day, right? Yeah, of course. Who wouldn't hope to fly to the moon one day? Uh, the Artemis program is doing really well, and we're really excited about it. We're actually expecting Artemis 1, the uncrewed test flight of Orion, to occur while we're on orbit. So we keep asking all of the experts, you know, are we going to be in a good trajectory to see that launch? Because we're really hoping that we'll get to see it from space. Watching SLS launch is going to be wild. We are really excited. Uh, and how does your expedition on ISS help pave the way for those missions to the moon? We're doing a lot of amazing stuff on ISS that'll contribute to moon missions. Um, we're doing some techno technology demonstrations of environmental control and life support equipment. So really trying to understand how we can reclaim all the water and, and turn it back into drinking water, how we can generate oxygen and really, for a lot of these things, you know, we've had these systems aboard the space station for 20 years, but what we're trying to understand is how to improve their reliability, make them easier to maintain, because now if something breaks, we have we have these cargo resupply missions coming to the space station every couple of months. So we can we can get new hardware to replace things, but we're not gonna have that luxury really on the moon or especially on a trip to Mars. So kind of trying to understand some of those engineering challenges, these like important improvements are really important. And then we're also doing a lot of medical research to understand how the space environment affects the human body and think about what it's gonna take to stay healthy on a mission to the moon or eventually, you know, a three, two to three year round trip to Mars is a totally different ball game. Um, so there's a lot of awesome research going on that will inform how we stay healthy on those missions. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time and good luck with the thank launch you. and good luck with your mission. Thank you. Thank you.